Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins. I'm a Linode developer advocate and what we're gonna be doing in this video is setting up Splunk, probably one of the best ways to turn your server logs, your server data into easily readable information. So Splunk helps turn data into doing with Splunk. You can extract value from the data on your server. This enables IT operations, management, security, and compliance monitoring and managing applications efficiently. At the center of Splunk, there is an engine to collect, index, and manage large amounts of data in a variety of formats. When it comes to Linode specifically, there are a lot of individual things that you can monitor, and we will be linking down below to a blog covering some of those things. But with that, what we're gonna be doing in this video is setting up a simple forwarder. We're gonna have two different servers, and these are gonna be two different Linodes. This one is pre-existing. This can really be whatever. It can be just an Apache web server, some sort of service, just about anything with data you want to go ahead and analyze. This one we're gonna create in this video, this is gonna be our dedicated Splunk server that we're gonna set up with Linode's one-click installer. And what we're gonna do once we have Splunk up and running is set up the forwarder on this server to send the data from our client over to Splunk so we could go ahead and monitor and analyze it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. So first things first, we're here on the Linode Create page. What we're gonna do is use the marketplace to go ahead and set up our Splunk server. So all we need to do is select it, scroll down and then fill out some of this information. For our Splunk admin, I'm just gonna go with admin. For the password, that one is fine. And right here, you could go ahead and input your domain information if you want to go ahead and use that. This is just a quick demonstration, so for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that as well as an SSL certificate. But there are official guides over on the uh, Splunk website if you're interested in uh, getting SSL and all that set up, as well as the Linode guides for setting up subdomains and using their API token. So with that, we're still gonna to want to fill out our admin email for the server, and then we're gonna do a username. This is our limited pseudo user, so just something you'll remember. Let's give a password for that limited pseudo user. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and select our image. I'm just gonna go with Debian 10, but you can go with Ubuntu if you would like to. Select the server that's closest to you or whatever you prefer. And for this, the shared one gigabyte nanode should be perfectly fine. I'm gonna keep the label as Splunk US West for now, give ourselves a strong, complicated, and secure root password. And then we're gonna to want to go ahead and create our Linode. So this right here is the page for the server we just created. If you ever want to monitor your server and see what it's currently doing, we just launch the Lish console here and you can see it set up everything and it's now prompting us to log in. So since it's prompting us to log in, it should be ready to go. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and copy this IP address right here, open up a new tab, paste that on in, and we're gonna to want to head over to port 8000. This should take us to our Splunk login here. So here it is. So just type in the information that you typed in when you create the Linode. So I'm gonna type in my password, sign in, and then here we are. We are now in our Splunk dashboard. Now where there's so much that you can do with Splunk and we're focusing on one of the simplest things in this video, but you, you can take the time to go through, explore all the different options and features that this has. But to go ahead and get that forwarder set up, we're gonna to want to go over to settings. And then under data, we're gonna to want to go to forwarding and receiving. And then we're gonna to want to give this the ability to receive data. So we're gonna select add new, and we're gonna use the default port, which is 9997. Go ahead and hit save. And now you can see right there, listing on this port is now enabled. And we can actually check this by SSHing into the server. So I'm gonna open up my terminal client real quick, make this a little bigger so you all can see it. And I'm just gonna do SSH into that limited pseudo user we just created. So that's Brandon at the IP address. Hit enter. Yes, this is my server. And then we will type in the password. And now that we're in, we're just gonna paste in this net stack command. It's gonna to check to see if we're listening on the 9997 port. Hit enter. And you can see right there, we are in fact listening on that port. So now really this is ready to start receiving information. If I go back over to our Splunk homepage, and then from there, we're gonna to go to search and reporting. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the tour for now. And then right here under data summary, if I click on that, 
you can see right now there's nothing. There's no hosts, there's no source types. It's completely empty. And what we're gonna do now is go to the server we want to monitor, install the forwarder, and then once we have everything set up under that data summary category, we will then have all of our data. So this right here is my old server for techhut.tv. It is currently running Ghost, which is a wonderful blogging platform. We've actually covered that on this channel in the past. If you are interested in that, you could go ahead and check out that video, but we're gonna go ahead and set up a forwarder on this. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is copy this IP address here, go into our terminal, and I'm just gonna open up a new tab here. Make this a bit bigger, a little longer, and then we're gonna SSH into the server that we want to monitor, type in your password, and here we go. I see there's actually a lot of updates that I can apply, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Now, while the server goes and updates, what we're gonna to need to do is get our command to download the Splunk forwarder. Now, for a lot of these, you can just go ahead and copy and paste commands, but for this, you're gonna to have to get it specifically from them and log into a Splunk account. Now, this right here is the page on the Splunk website that you're gonna to want to travel to to go ahead and get the download for the universal forwarder. Uh, for us, we're gonna go over to Linux here, and this is gonna be Debian. So right here under 64-bit deb, we're gonna click on download now, and it is going to begin a download, but we could go ahead and cancel that and just copy the command. So there it is. But what we want to do is download via command line. So go ahead and get this, click here to copy it all, control C, and then we're gonna to want to go back over to our server. It looks like everything just finished up over here. So what we're gonna to want to do is paste in that winget command to download the Splunk forwarder hit enter, and it's a pretty small download. You can see it's already done. And with it downloaded, we could type in ls, and you could see it right there. So to install this, we just do sudo apt install dot forward slash, and you could start typing it and hit tab. For you, the command is probably gonna be a little bit different because there might be a different version, but from there, I could just hit enter, and then it's gonna go ahead and begin the installation process for the forwarder. Now, once it is done, what we're gonna want to do is travel to the directory it is installed in, and in this case, it's gonna be opt, Splunk forwarder dash bin or forward slash bin. Hit enter and if we ls in here, we could see everything that was just installed. So now what we're gonna want to do is actually start it and accept the license and you could do that with this command, sudo dot forward slash Splunk start accept license. Hit enter, it's actually gonna bring up the license for us. If you hold down enter, it's gonna go ahead and run it through the license. It is uh, definitely a lot of reading. I do recommend you uh, read through this if you're gonna be using this uh, on actual production servers. And we're just about to the end of this license. So do we agree? Why? And enter. So now it's going to ask us to create a administrator username and password. This is a username and password that we're going to be using in a little bit. So remember, it is on our client side. So do keep note of that. Just to keep life simple, I'm going to use the same username and password as this server. So type in your password, hit enter, confirm that password. So it looks like it changed since the last time I used it. I didn't need to put accept license and that's why it made us skim through that anyways. So now that we have the forwarder installed on our client side server to go ahead and send data over to our Splunk server, we need to actually add our server. And that can be done with the sudo dot forward slash Splunk add forward server. And what we're gonna do is go over back to Linode and we're gonna go and grab the IP address of our forwarding server. So here it is under Splunk US West. I'm gonna give that IP address a copy. And if you did set it up with a domain name, you should be able to use that too. But I'm just gonna paste in that IP address and we're gonna want to send this to the port 9997. Hit enter, and you can see it added forwarding to that specific server. Now, before we go ahead and add our logs to go ahead and send over to Splunk, we're gonna want to simply do a sudo Splunk enable boot start. So when you do reboot your server, this service will automatically reboot. So hit enter, and this init script was configured to now run at boot. So there is a lot of different types of logs, services, and other monitoring variables that we can use with this forwarder. And for this video, we're gonna be doing a couple different demonstrations. I'm gonna be using the auth log for user login attempts, and I'm gonna be using the syslog for all of our system logging information. And these are gonna have various source types, and there are a ton of different source types that you can use. There'll be a link below to the official Splunk documentation for all the information on that. But the source types we're gonna be using is Linux Secure and Syslog. And many of these logs can be found in your var directory. So if I go cd forward slash var ls, you can see we have the log folder. So if I cd into log run ls, you can see all the different stuff we have, including MySQL, we have kernel log, auth log, and syslog, and really a whole bunch more that we can use Splunk to go ahead and monitor. 
So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and CD back into that Splunk border bin, and we're gonna run this command. This is sudo dot forward slash Splunk. We're gonna add the monitor that is at var log auth dot log. So this is all of our login, log out, all that kind of stuff. And the source type is going to be Linux secure. Now doing it this way does not make it permanent. After I run a couple examples, we're gonna be editing a file that will make this type of logging permanent. But for now, let's go ahead and run this command. And you can see it added the monitor var log and that auth log file. So now on this page, you saw last time if we went to data summary, there was no data. This time, if I go to data summary, we can see one host come up here and that is our server. And you can see we have over 25,000 counts because this is rather an older server. For sources, we can see it's the var auth log and the source type is Linux secure. And I could go and get more information. If I click on that source, we can see all the different data we have collected with various IP addresses, some statistics on how many events on what days, and you can see the type of data. So failed password for root, disconnected from invalid user. From the search, we could go ahead and type in something like uh, failed, and then it will give me all the different log information with everything that says failed. So super cool stuff, very useful if you're trying to analyze data on your server. So now I'm back on the server with the forwarder and what we can do is add another log and I'm going to add that uh, syslog mod right here. So we have the add monitor, the location of the log source type is going to be syslog. Hit enter, type in my password. And if you do get this, this is a case that we're going to want to go ahead and type in our Splunk username and password. So like I said, for me, it's going to be the same, hit enter, and that's probably because I logged in and logged out, but we can see here it now added that monitor. Now it might not be immediate for you when you go ahead and try to pull it up. It might take five minutes or so for everything to pull over, especially if you have a very large log file. So now if I go over to data summary, we can now see the new sources and source types. So if I go to system log here, we can see all of this information. And for example, if I just wanted to search when was the last update, I can search update and then get all the information or all the logs that have that update variable within it. So now what I'm gonna do is head back over to our terminal and we're gonna make these log entries permanent. And to do that, we're gonna to want to go ahead and edit a file and that is gonna be in the OPT, Splunk forwarder ETC, and this is gonna be under local and inputs conf. Hit enter. We can see that this is a new file and to make what I've inputted so far permanent, what we're gonna to wanna to do is paste this in monitor the location and then the source type Linux secure. And you're gonna to want to do that for any logs you input. I just go control O, output that, control X. And then from there, we're gonna to want to go ahead and restart Splunk and we could just do this by pointing to the Splunk bin and then restart. So we hit enter, you can see shutting down, please wait, it may take a bit. And then Splunk is back up and running. So now when we restart, we won't have to add those monitors. Everything will be automatic and life is good. So we're gonna do one more example here. I'm gonna CD back into var and our log directory here, ls, and we're gonna do nginx, because I know that the service running on this server is nginx. You can see right there, there's a folder. So if I CD'd into that ls, I could see all the logs I have available. There's an access log and an error log. I theoretically, let's say I want to monitor the access log. So what I'm gonna do is go up a couple commands back into that sudo nano Splunk forwarder for the inputs conf, hit enter. And what I could do is paste in this. And I just noticed I have spaces here. So let's get rid of those spaces so everything looks right. So here, this is gonna monitor that access log we just looked at. Source type is gonna be nginx plus access. And earlier I mentioned the Splunk documentation for source types, that's where I got that information. So I'm gonna go control O, save that out, exit out and now I am again going to restart Splunk or at least this uh, Splunk forwarder on this server. So now that that's restarted, I could head back over to my Splunk dashboard. Let's go to search and reporting and then under data summary, you can see we now have three different source types and we have that access log here. There's only one item at the moment, but that's probably because it's still obviously importing everything. But here we have a lot more information. This is all the different people who are accessing this service. And here we could see Mozilla. A lot of these are Google bots. We see some windows. So this is just one other way to go ahead and monitor uh, what's going on on your servers. And you saw that we didn't need to actually go through and add the monitor, like with the initial commands we inputted, we just added it to that inputs configuration file, restarted the server and everything showed up perfectly. 
So that was our little introduction to Splunk. I do hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy playing around with it and maybe using Splunk to go ahead and monitor your logs on your server to give it a much more human readable, searchable, indexable type of format. With that, if you enjoy this content, we have a whole bunch of cloud computing videos, tutorials, guides, a whole bunch of stuff to do with Linode on this Linode YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe, ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Uh, with all that, I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.